Today we are going on a 30 hours train journey from Bangkok, Thailand to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and we are going to compare the two train experiences in both countries. But here's the thing, I've never been on such a long train ride before, I've never slept on a train before and I actually don't feel that comfortable doing that. But I want to challenge myself, so is it going to be an easy ride or will it be super uncomfortable and which country has the better trains? Join me and let's find out. Okay, it's a little bit tight in here, especially with all the luggage. Okay, so to make the journey as comfortable as possible, I have booked myself a private first class cabin. So there are actually two beds in here, but I have the cabin for myself. I will tell you the price for this later. First, let's have a proper review. And I also have a first class train booked later in Malaysia so we're going to compare the first class experiences here in Thailand and then later in the video in Malaysia so we have yeah two seats here and I guess this is where I will be sleeping later tonight a pillow here already uh, oh we have some mattresses here I guess that somebody will come later to uh, prepare the beds also maybe the blanket already here I think this is a towel and then I have a little sink right here with water, a little table right here, actually pretty nice. And I do think that there is oh yeah, another table right here. So actually, this is not that bad, right? And yeah, where do I leave all my luggage? Uh, I think, yes, there's space underneath the seat. So we can just do like this. And yeah, this is the first leg of the journey in total. There will be three legs of the whole journey to reach Kuala Lumpur. And yeah, the first leg is going to be to Southern Thailand, to Hat Yai. And that is also going to be the longest leg. 17 hours is the time that I will spend right here. And actually we have a little computer here, a little screen, which is now in Thai. Can I switch it to English? Ah, oh, now it's in English, okay. So... Destination, station, so 7.23, that's the arrival in Hat Yai, the scheduled arrival, it is now 3 o'clock. And here we can see the, the bathroom facilities, it's green, so it's probably not in use at the moment, there's even a shower. I will show you of course the facilities of the bathroom later. And yeah, air conditioning here, which at the moment, pretty good, pretty good. I don't really like it if the aircon is too cold, especially in the night, usually in the night I don't use aircon. So I'm not sure if I can actually turn it off. Yeah, we have a USB charging plug here and a proper plug here. Light. So yeah, also electricity here. That is really nice. Oh, actually. Oh, oh. We have two bottles of water right here. And a glass. Okay, and there's a door here. So I guess in case the cabin next to you is like your family or your friends, you have basically like a connecting a room. Somebody come, hello. Do you know everything? Uh, no, it's my first I, time I, here. How about you? Then Carnival, Carnival, yeah. Then time destination, station. When you want to sleep, you call me and make the bed for you. I'll, in the evening, I call you and then you make the bed? Yes. Okay, okay, Start very now nice. until 10 p.m. Okay. What time 10 p.m. I must do? That's okay. I will okay. sleep before 10 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Air you can close and open. Ah, I can close and open it. Okay, okay. Right. CCTV camera all the team. Yeah. For this man to person. Okay. Thailand and Balloon, that's right. My name is Tani Jinkert. I'm an accident tech for you. Welcome. Okay, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Oh, one more question. Yes. There's no food here, right? Uh, the list along car number seven. Have this exception take menu for sale at here. You can buy that, you can buy it. Oh, I can order food? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I'll ask you a little bit. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And here, now you may wonder, why am I taking such a long train journey when I can just take a simple two hours flight instead? Well, like I said in the beginning of the video already, I want to challenge myself because I felt that over the past month, I have become too comfortable with my way of traveling. And I actually like to challenge myself, leaving my comfort zone, doing, doing new things. And also this is going to be the goal of the whole new series. The new series here on the channel starts with today's video. And the goal of this series is to reach Jakarta, Indonesia, 
without taking a single flight. So we're going to travel all the way from here, Bangkok, to Malaysia, then to Singapore and then to Jakarta. There will be ferry rides, there will be bus rides, there will be train rides, everything, just no flights. And yeah, the first part of the whole series is the train ride to Kuala Lumpur. And actually, yeah, I was afraid that yeah, long train rides, they will be boring, monotonous, in trains you usually have a lack of privacy, limited space for you to sit down, especially for me, I am a tall person, 1 meter 90. And yeah, also the sanitary conditions are usually not that great on trains in Southeast Asia. And I'm also not sure how the sleep is going to be here. But yeah, all of this is going to be part of yeah, challenging myself, leaving the comfort zone. And yeah, the price of this 17 hours train ride with a private cabin is 2,500 baht. But yeah, my first impressions here on the train were actually quite nice. Obviously I had privacy, the leg space was totally fine for me, the seats were very comfortable. So I was actually really looking forward to the rest of the journey here on the train in Thailand. Right, let's check out the bathroom situation. Oops. So we have, I think there's a urinal here. Yeah, this is uh, just a urinal, so just for the man. And then we have two regular bathrooms here. I think there's no separation between uh, man and woman. And yeah, proper Western toilet even here. So that is something that some Westerners that are traveling in Asia are scared of, that there are only like Asian squat toilets on the train. And I think many of the trains in Thailand actually only have squat toilets. But here we have a Western toilet. I think let's check the other one. Yeah, the other one is the same. And then there is even a shower here. Have a look at this. So we have a little shower cabin here. So looks like an electric boiler here, so it's probably even hot or warm water. And you can take a shower in the train, which I will probably do tomorrow morning. So oh, I actually also have to use the bathroom right now. Okay, a little bit difficult with the aiming because the train is actually shaking a lot. I'm not sure if you can really see it on the camera. But uh, anyway, I think uh, yeah, my concerns about the sanitary conditions here were not needed. It's totally fine. I have to close it. I think it's closing automatically. So uh, yeah, all good. Uh, at least for this part of the journey. We will see later how it will be on the Malaysian train then. And actually, it's getting quite cold in here now. So I already uh, closed it here. But I can't totally turn it off. So maybe I will make use of my hoodie, which I'm always traveling with my hoodie, but the only times I really use this one is usually just in trains or planes or buses where the AC is blasting. Okay, it is now uh, six o'clock, so three hours into the journey. And I would say this is like the normal length of a regular train ride. Three hours in a train is usually absolutely no problem. So now we are entering the, by the way, can you hear the, the screaming baby in the background? Not sure if the camera picks up the sound, but uh, yeah, there's a screaming baby. I hope that will be no problem later in the night. Uh, anyway, so now, yeah, the first three hours, very easy, very simple. But yeah, now we are getting into the part where it's longer than just a regular train ride. But so far, I feel totally fine. Everything perfect, no worries, no problem. I think the challenging part will uh, probably start later then. The thing with the trains in Thailand, we are not breaking any speed records. As you can see, we are not moving at the moment. And actually this is happening quite a lot. That we are either not moving at all or just very, very slow. And I'm a little bit worried about the time, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, so the estimated arrival time is now 7.55, which is already half an hour later than scheduled. And yeah, I have a connecting train which will bring me to the border of Malaysia and that one is leaving at I think 8.50 or 8.55 so there's only like one hour in between at the moment and yeah, now still one hour in between that's totally all right but if we are keep getting delayed and delayed then there might will be a problem tomorrow morning with getting my connecting train which is the only train I can take to later then get my train in Malaysia. 
All right, I'm going to kill some time here now while watching some videos. By the way, there's no Wi-Fi on the train, but I can just uh, hotspot with my phone, which is actually working quite well. And yeah, I want to watch highlights of a recent Germany football game, Germany versus Ukraine, but the video is unavailable. It's not available to watch here in Thailand. And actually, that is a problem that I come across very often while I'm traveling, that certain content is not available in the country that I am in. But I also have a solution for that, something that I can recommend to anyone especially if you are traveling a lot and that is Surfshark VPN. With the help of a VPN service you can virtually change the location of your phone or your laptop to basically anywhere in the world. So I'm just making one click now and then I'm virtually back in Germany and suddenly the video becomes available to watch for me. And when you're connected to a VPN it also encrypts the data that is sent between your phone or your laptop and the internet so your whole surfing experience becomes safer. I am using Surfshark VPN for almost two years already now. I can highly recommend them. And if you want to check them out as well, I will leave a link in the description or in the pinned comment. And if you enter the promo code CAN, you can get three extra months for free. And they also have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can test it out without any risk. So I'm going to not only enjoy the view here now, but also the highlights of the Germany game. Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. I just have a... No, I want to... Uh, I want the food. You said... Food. Uh, okay. Are you bringing a menu? Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you. So to let you uh, see the menu, we have some basic dishes here, french fries, chicken wings and of course a lot of Thai dishes, Thai food. Okay, so there, let's see uh, how many minutes I will have to wait. It is now almost 8 p.m. Uh, by now it's completely dark already outside. the food has arrived it was now I would say like 20 minutes waiting time so actually totally all right the price for this was uh, 180 baht and actually what I order it is from the from the breakfast menu but uh, it looked actually really good okay we have orange juice here ah, pretty good pretty refreshing I have some uh, ham right here two fried eggs and then a little toast, sausage, a little salad, and some watermelon here. Okay, this is my dinner. Actually better than I was expecting before the ride. Okay, it is time to, uh, to make the bed ready. Well, it's very shaky here now. So the gentleman right here is going to prepare my bed now. time for the bed test. First decision I have to make. Do I want to lie head here or head here? Mm, I think I'm going to lie like this. Okay, let's test the bed. So here this is the blanket. Let's test it. First surprise, I was expecting that I will not fit into this bed here because I am quite tall, 1 meter 90, but I'm actually fitting inside the bed. So that is actually okay. And then, yeah, is it comfortable? I mean, the mattress is quite thin, but uh, actually I think it, it will be okay. I mean, usually if the bed is not that great, you feel it after a few hours. So it's too early to judge. I will give you the final review tomorrow morning. But I actually think it's going to be all right. Okay, I changed into a more comfortable shirt now. And yeah, how do I feel now? It is now uh, like 10 p.m. So like seven hours into the journey. That means only 23 hours are left. But yeah, so far I feel actually pretty good. It was easy. Just uh, sitting here watching some videos, listening to some podcasts, that was actually quite okay. Of course it would be nice now to uh, be in a proper bed, in a proper room. I kind of miss a proper bed now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, part of uh, challenging me, that's what I want actually, and it's only one night. But yeah, I think the night now will be uh, yeah the most challenging part of the whole journey. And then once the night is done, tomorrow it's going to be another full day of traveling until I reach Kuala Lumpur in the evening but uh, yeah for now I feel all right the first leg of the journey the first few hours we are totally all right and yeah I'm trying to sleep now and then see you again tomorrow morning good night guys all right little update it is now almost midnight 
and I'm really having a hard time to fall asleep. <laughs> I'm using uh, earplugs now, you can maybe see it, because uh, yeah, it's very noisy, it's very bumpy, the air condition is very loud, and yeah, just not, uh, not easy to uh, fall asleep here for me, although I'm actually quite tired, but uh, yeah, I will try my best. And good morning! It is now 7 a.m. and our scheduled arrival is in, let me check the monitor, 7.18. So we are, will be arriving quite on time. And yeah, how was the night? To be honest, it was terrible. <laughs> I woke up many, many times. It was really hard to fall asleep and I am a light sleeper. And yeah, all the noises here, shaking, bumpy. Yeah, it wasn't a good good sleep, uh, actually really bad and also like the, the mattress here. Yeah, after one or two hours I was really feeling it. But overall, yeah, I am happy now, almost in Hat Yai and then the first leg out of three legs is done. Ah, I see the sun here. Okay. Ah, looks so sway. Sway, <laughs> Ah, yeah, the sunrise was on this side, so I wasn't able to see it. And now we have some trees also blocking the way. I don't know, my my look. My look. No, no. No, no, still have water here. Okay. <laughs> everything, I think you have everything. <laughs> okay, go, go, go. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure what, what she was trying to say. Maybe if you understand Thai, maybe you could translate. And yeah, we then approached Hat Yai in Southern Thailand. And Southern Thailand is actually a very interesting part of Thailand. It's predominantly Muslim here, whereas the rest of Thailand is predominantly Buddhist. So here in Southern Thailand, you see more mosques than you see temples. You see halal restaurants. You see women wearing a hijab. So it's definitely a very different, but also very interesting part of Thailand. Yeah, we come for all right, we made it to Hat Yai, southern Thailand. The first part out of three of this journey successfully done. But yeah, what is the plan for now? Um, yeah, the second step of the three-leg journey to Kuala Lumpur is going to be reaching the border of Malaysia. In order to get there, I have to get a ticket here for like a small train, which will be like, I think only like one hour. And then once we are in Malaysia, we will board the third train, which will also be a first-class train. So it's going to be very interesting to compare the first-class train later in Malaysia to the one we just took here in Thailand. I need to go to Padang Bazaar. 8.55 in one hour, one and a half, yeah, okay. Okay, ticket secured, only 50 baht, and yeah, we arrived very good on time. That means I have now a little bit over one hour here until the second part of the journey will start. And fun fact, this is the only train station in Thailand that has a hotel inside the station. I used to stay in this hotel when I was here like two years ago. Okay, so this is the next train, which looks kind of short, but I guess there will be another train connecting to this one. I can sit anywhere? 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 Okay. It is incredible. It is 8.40 a.m. and it is already really, really hot here. There is no aircon in this train. We only have uh, some fans which are not even running at the moment, so I hope they will start running once we uh, start the journey. But oh well, it is boiling hot in here. <laughs> okay, the lady over there is selling something out of this train into this train. Oh, she's selling some fruits and I see some eggs, fried chicken. Scenery here. So 
always very interesting for me to uh, ride through these rural areas, passing some small villages and just to see how people live here. That is what I actually really like about taking a train instead of taking a flight. You actually see something from the country. I think my mom would like to live here in a small hut surrounded by only green fields, the forest. My mom would really enjoy this. So mom, if you are seeing this, let me know if I am right. Alright, I actually think we already crossed the official border, which I think is over there. Go out here? Okay. So we have to get out here and then go through immigration. Enjoy your time in Malaysia. It's Malaysia already. Oh, we're already in Malaysia, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they just told me that they are going on a trip uh, to Penang today. Okay, there's one thing now that I am worried about and that is the situation with my passports. I'm having two passports now. One is my old one, which was full. That's why I applied for a new one. Obviously, the old one is not valid anymore. But the thing is, I enter with Thailand with the old one. So my arrival stamp is in the old passport. So when I got the new passport, I actually went to the immigration office and asked them, hey, do I need to transfer the stamp into the new passport? And if I do, can you do that? And then the situation was the following. One officer told me, yes, you need to transfer the stamp. And yes, we can do that here. And then the second officer told me, oh, you don't need to transfer the stamp. And no, we can't do that. So sometimes it's like that in Thailand. One official person says the one thing and the other official person says the other thing. So in the end, I didn't got my stamp transferred. So let's see what the immigration officer here at the border will say about this. And I just realized I might have a second problem. I didn't think about the time difference. Malaysia is a different time zone, so it's one hour ahead. And I didn't thought about that when I looked up the train schedules and booked the connecting train. So I thought there would be plenty of time, but actually the time is a little bit limited now. And there's actually a long line ahead of me. But yeah, the second part out of the three-part journey is done. So I actually also feel a little bit relieved, but I will be way more relieved once I am through the immigration here. And I am in Malaysia. And yeah, if you are ever in the same situation, when you have two passports and the stamp is in the old one, bring some time. The officer now didn't really know what to do with my passport, so she had to call her supervisor. And yeah, it took a little while, but uh, now I am in and I'm actually very happy to be back in Malaysia. By the way, I booked the first train in Thailand and the Malaysia train online already. I will leave some information about how to book it online in the description if you're interested. Oh, and the train is already here. All right, let's see how the Malaysian train experience will be. I'm sorry. Okay, so this seat here is called a business class seat. There was no official first class seat available. So this is the highest class that was uh, possible to book on this train. So I think we can uh, call it a first class experience now. And yeah, first of all, yeah, this is actually not the right height. Ah, I can adjust it. Okay. Yeah, the seat is quite quite comfy actually. And especially important for someone like me. I am quite tall, 1 meter 90. I actually have a good amount of leg space here. And then we have yeah, charging places here. So you can USB charge or put an extra plug in. Is the seat adjustable? Oh yeah, it is even adjustable. Nobody behind me so far? Oh, this is actually very comfortable. Almost a good place to sleep as well. And the aircon is lasting, and that is pretty good at the moment. And yeah, the price of this seat for the whole journey was 175 Malaysian ringgit, and that brings the total price of the whole journey from Bangkok to Kuala Lumpur to quite exactly 100 US dollar which by the way is double the price a flight would have cost. So you're not saving any money by taking the train and you're definitely also not saving any time. And yeah, we're also going to check out later during the ride the food situation here as well as the bathroom situation. All right, we just got a goodie bag, which has a little towel and some earphones. And they actually look pretty decent. Oh, 
another surprise. I didn't even know that there is food included in the ticket. That is actually a very good surprise because I'm starting to get really hungry. It is 3 o'clock now and it smells amazing. So we're having chicken here, four tiny pieces of vegetables and some really good looking rice. no ATM at the train station. The funny thing was I asked for an ATM and then somebody told me that I have to use a taxi to drive to an ATM. Really weird, a train station with no ATM. And here I am on, on the journey for over 24 hours now and uh, it starts to get really tiring. I'm really really keen to arrive and to have proper rest. I'm getting really tired. Uh, I think actually, yeah, it's, it's quite comfortable here, so the ride itself is not uncomfortable. It's just the amount of time that I spent on the journey now, over 24 hours. By the way, I just discovered that there's a TV here as well. Ah, I think I can actually order food here as well. It's probably an advantage of the, of the business class here. We were approaching Kuala Lumpur, I got really tired. It's been a long journey already, but I also felt happy. Happy that I did this journey and it was a really good feeling that I decided to leave my comfort zone and to go on this super long 30 hours trip. And it really proved me that sometimes it's good to try new things, to challenge yourself, leave your comfort zone. And I'm actually looking really forward to do this more often on the journey to reach Jakarta. And I can really recommend to anyone, try to challenging yourself sometimes. But now we still have to answer the final questions. All right, and finally in Kuala Lumpur. And yeah, let's answer the questions from the very beginning of the video. Was it an easy ride or was it super uncomfortable? Overall, it was pretty easy. The only thing that was really uncomfortable was the, the sleep. But other than that, the ride was pretty easy, pretty comfortable. And yeah, which country has the better train experience? Overall, I like both experiences. Both trains were good. The Thailand one, I really liked the privacy of my private cabin. The staff was really nice. The seating was very comfortable as well. But yeah, the sleeping part wasn't really comfortable the sleeping was not good at all and also there was no food included only one bottle of water and then the train in Malaysia was overall way more modern it was faster it was less bumpy the ride was quieter the staff has been really nice as well and there was food included a cake a tea and a little goodie bag so if I have to choose a country now with a better train experience I think I would go with Malaysia but overall I liked both experiences and I would recommend both trains train rides. And yeah, I am very exhausted now, but also very happy to be back in Malaysia. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao, guys!